A few ways to wear one item of clothing for the spring, living and shopping in New York City, and how to always have something to wear. What is the anatomy of your personal style? Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Shakura, and I believe that when you feel good, you look good. So on this channel, I show you how to take fashion and use it as a tool to help you look and feel your best. So I have really been trying to extend um, my closet and not just by shopping, but by taking one piece of clothing and trying to style it different ways. If I cannot style a piece of clothing several ways, I will not buy it. It's really about cost per wear and how it fits into my day-to-day -day life. So I have a few things that I want to show you and alternate ways to style them. So Lily Silk sent me a few items that I want to style and I want to show you how one piece of clothing can look for different styles, right? I know we all have different styles here and sometimes we look at one piece of clothing and feel like it doesn't work for us. So I wanna show you what I would do in different scenarios, right? So let's start with this cardigan. You are a cool girl. Um, you look at this cardigan and you just say no way, absolutely no way. However, if you are a person who is more classic, maybe a little more elegant, you see this cardigan and you're like, okay, I could definitely make this work. So we're going to start with the more classic way, right? I saw this cardigan and I immediately thought Lake Como or someplace um, in Europe for the spring and the summer, right? It's very classic. Not, not every place in Europe, let's be clear. <laughs> But I'm thinking specifically Lake Como just because that's the last place I was in Europe, right? So anyway, I saw this, I thought classy, I thought classic, and I kind of put those two together. So what I did was I paired it with these white wide lead pants that are very comfortable. And if I were going to Lake Como again, and if you haven't been, or if you have, let me just tell you, you want to be cute, but the cobblestone and the stairs they'll take you out okay so you also want to be comfortable so I paired it with some white sneakers this beautiful little cute top handle white leather bag which is perfect again for Lake Como because I don't want a big bag in fact this is also a crossbody so I would probably wear a crossbody and then these sunglasses I actually wore the last time I was there and the only time I was there. This is my first time in Lake Como this past uh, summer. These sunglasses by Maman that I got on a crazy sale, okay? And they were absolutely stunning. They matched the navy blue in this cardigan and I just thought that, hey, I had to wear them. And here you have it, like it's very classic. It's very classy, right? It's cute, it's easy, it's comfortable. But what if none of those adjectives describe your style? How can you make this cardigan that is seemingly very classic fit into a different type of style? So if you watched this video, yeah, you've seen these pants and no, I have not gotten them hem yet, okay? This is a good example of how fit can really make or break an outfit and the importance of a tailor. If you watched the video I pointed out just a second ago, you know that these pants are too big. They're too big in the waist and too long. <laughs> and I haven't had a chance to go get them hemmed. But I also want to point out that the cardigan is a bit big. So when I first got this cardigan and Lily Silk sent it to me, I was a different size and it fit a bit better. Now it's just a little bit too big. And the mixture of the cardigan that's too big and the pants are too big don't give the exact clean type of look I um, want. Now, while it doesn't look horrible, I would have preferred a more tailored look. And when I mean tailored, I don't mean smaller. I mean something that looks better on my body. Hopefully you'll be able to tell what I'm going for here. Just to dress it down a bit, with a more casual pair of pants added to the juxtaposition of a very classic and classic cardigan will give you a different vibe as opposed to the white wide leg Lake Como type of vibe. That is the point of me showing you this. So I wanted to insert that now <laughs> and hopefully with those thoughts in mind, you could watch the rest of this outfit 
understanding what I was trying to do. <laughs> so they're still really long. But the only thing I did was to make this seem a little bit more relaxed was put on a pair of denim jeans that are baggy, that are baggy and more casual. Now, if you hate baggy jeans, of course you could do a nice straight leg pair of jeans, right? Which is another option, obviously another option for me. But adding the more relaxed jean with these little pointy toe shoes that are, oh, there's, I love the little pointy toe shoes sticking out, but the length of these pants is killing me. It's really killing me. And then I just switched out my earrings for little, little hoops and these um, YSL sunglasses and threw on a clutch. It makes it a little more relaxed, not so Lake Como. It's the same top, different look, different feel. And now I will say that this is a size bigger than I would have liked to get. And I feel like if I were to size down, it would definitely give it a different kind of look. Other ways to style this would include all types of ways, skirts. I mean, there's, there are definitely so many ways to style this type of cardigan that can be a staple in your wardrobe. So let me show you what else they sent me. So this top is 100% cashmere. It's absolutely beautiful. It's like, oh, it's so soft. And you know what I didn't say? This cardigan is actually merino wool. And if you know anything about that type of wool, you know that it is the softest, most luxurious type of wool. And that, in fact, is what this is, right? But this is 100% cashmere, and of course, you know how beautiful cashmere is. Now, when you see this, there's nothing extra to it, but I feel like this is the basis to some beautiful outfits. This is something that you need in your closet. Let me show you how I would use this, two different ways to style it, why you need something like this in your closet. So this cashmere top is just the basis to some beautiful outfits, right? So you guys have seen this blazer before, but if you are new here, you have not seen the full suiting, right? And this is hands down one of my favorite little looks. And if I didn't have this to put underneath it, I would not have a basis to the look. It just like brings everything together. I paired it with a pair of, like, if you're not new here, you know that I have all the boots. I black heeled boots, which I know there's a lot of discussion about right now, but y'all can miss me with those because my black heels are comfortable. And if I'm going to work and I'll be standing all day, I need a comfortable pair of shoes, okay? So I paired it with a brown pair of boots that are comfortable. And then these sunglasses, these brown sunglasses that I recently got. And then look, it's like a, it's a look. It's gonna keep me warm because it's cashmere. It looks beautiful against the color of the suit. And I mean, come on, right? I just, I love it together. And I was going to wear this suit with a black. In fact, I have worn it with black underneath it, but I love the brown a bit more as it lightens everything up. I love this color. I love how soft this cashmere is. And I love the way this whole thing looks together. see how this cashmere top again brings the whole look together right this is all white or cream the blazer the skirt the boots and I could have gone with a cream top which would also be beautiful but this adds contrast right and warmth <laughs> like I said it is cashmere you guys you know what's crazy I actually had a Tory Burch bag that was this color that would match this outfit so well but I recently sold it because I wasn't wearing it. And now I have this outfit to put together. I don't have the bag. And let me tell you, I'm a little devastated. So that just means that I have every opportunity and all the reasons to buy a new bag. Anyway, this is the second look of how I would style this. Of course, you could wear this with jeans or a suit, but because I'm a little extra, we're going all white. I kept on the same brown sunglasses. I don't have the bag that I would love to have, but... This is it. I always feel like there's something so elegant about this color and like in a silky material. In fact, what I have on is sold out everywhere because everything I have on is old. However, I'm going to show you a few things that Lily Silk has that is very similar to this, that gives you a very similar vibe.
this is another two things that uh, Lily Silk sent me. I have a vest, and this is terrible. You're going to see it on me, right? <laughs> but this is a beautiful little vest that matches this skirt, and they go together. They're good for transitional pieces. I really feel like styled um, in different ways. This could be used for the winter, the summer, and the fall. Let me show you or give you some ideas of how to style this. So, I mean, so a few things of note. When I got this skirt, I was a size bigger. <laughs> so I kind of had to pull this skirt up. Um, it, I do think it runs true to size. I just know that I've lost a little bit since then. So if you see that it's a little big and I'm pulling on it, that's what the, the issue is here. But I still feel like it looks good. I left it open a little bit here because I wanted to match this brown in the skirt to the brown in my jacket and the brown in my boots this is giving me working girl it's really giving me not working girl i recently watched that movie but <laughs> it's giving me mary tyler moore when i was a kid i used to watch um, the reruns of mary tyler moore and nick and knight anybody else any uh, old millennials young gen x used to watch mary tyler moore i used to watch with my dad um but anyway it's giving me mary tyler moore and i think maybe because of the boots and the flare skirt is definitely something to wear to work for that transitional period unfortunately as i record this it says it's 80 degrees outside in new york city so i would probably have to switch that maybe for some flats or some you know some low heels kitten heels but this just shows that this could also be worn in the fall. I know there's like a situation, everyone's talking about black hair boot, heel boots, but if I need to be comfortable, y'all can fight me on this. <laughs> I'm gonna wear the black heels just to be comfortable because who's running around New York City and going to work in stilettos every day? Not me. <laughs> So again, if you are a little more relaxed and you're not so um, buttoned up, why not wear the vest like a shirt, right? Layer it a little bit. As it gets a little warmer, you can even just wear this vest and a pair of jeans, which is very much um, on trend right now. So all I did, again, put on these long jeans. <laughs> and I put on these boots that I had on with that whole all white look, just to go and give it a little more interest to go with the blazer right and then i just use the vest as a layering piece to give it some depth to give it some more interest I one of my vintage bottega bag and it's a little, a little more relaxed a little bit more cool i really feel like denim has a way of making things a little bit more cool um, and a little more laid back i would 100 percent wear it like this but on a dress down friday or just out to dinner whatever your style is like a casual dinner right we all know that blazers are a staple and suiting is very much on trend right now so i feel like pairing it with a pair of jeans baggy or straight whatever your desired uh cut is i like both there's more than one way to wear this vest and there's more than one way to wearing a lot of things in your closet the point to buying things is to be able to wear it over and over again in different ways. I hope that I was able to show you or give you some examples of just how to do that with these Lily Silk pieces. Even if it wasn't your style, you can see how you can mix and match and play in your closet to create different styles with one or two pieces. I really feel like it's always a good idea to have quality pieces in your wardrobe. While not everything has to be top notch and quality, you always wanna have a few of those things that you know are always going to look good, make you feel good, and that you could have forever. If you use the code SK20, you will receive 20% off of these beautifully made pieces made out of quality materials, cashmere, silk, wool, all of the best. And if you are in the New York City metro area and surrounding areas, I have great news as Lily Silk will be opening their very first store here in New York City. So stay tuned. So I am very thankful to Lily Silk for sending me over those items. So as you watch this, I am presently in London somewhere um, doing something, hopefully not shopping, <laughs> okay? But in order to get there, there are a few things that I had to do to prepare to go. And let's just say I didn't get everything that I needed.
Hey girl, hey. We just came from this absolutely fabulous little jazz brunch. I didn't get a lot of footage from there because it's like a, it was a weird, it's a beautiful place, but you know, you can't film everywhere, but it was absolutely stunning. <laughs> just thought about this <laughs> i went to banana republic factory to get the trench coat to get a trench coat um i ordered one and it was too big so i went to go get a smaller size guys it was too big and i had to go get a smaller size very exciting anyway i just thought that i just thought about it that i should have brought you guys into banana republic factory and i did not but when i get home i will show you um the trench coat it's just a nice you know trench coat and now we are on our way to Bergdorf Goodman. If you are a fashion person and follow fashion, you know that Phoebe Philo came out with her own line. I think she's had two drops so far. And she hasn't been at any brick and mortar stores. So it's a big deal, apparently, that she is in Bergdorf Goodman or her line is at Bergdorf Goodman. And I'm going to go and take you guys along for the ride, even though it came out a few days ago and I might be late to the party and there might not be much to see. We're gonna see what there is to see. So I do have some thoughts on the Phoebe Philo collection and about Phoebe Philo in general, but um, we'll talk about that later, probably in, later in this vlog. Right now we're just in Central Park. It is an absolutely beautiful day and I didn't really want to stay in stores for too long. I wanted to be outside and enjoy this day, but we will talk about Phoebe Philo and everything that's connected with that brand. I have some thoughts.
go, hey, if you see clothes behind me, you guys, I'm packing now. I still have to go do my hair. I'm editing. Everything is crazy right now. <laughs> so please excuse if I turn the camera and you just see stuff everywhere. Okay, I'm in the middle of just getting my life together before we leave. But I was just editing and putting some outfits together for the trip and I realized that I forgot to bring it back to the Phoebe Philo situation. The collection I wasn't surprised by because I've seen some of it online. I just wanted to go in and feel it and see the colors in real life. Nothing surprised me really if you are familiar with her work where she was at Celine. It's giving me very similar vibes, right? There's even a pair of sunglasses there. Um, the peak sunglasses that look so much like the glasses when she was at Celine that I am dying. I love those sunglasses so much. I haven't gotten them or I didn't get them. I had two chances to get them <laughs> and I haven't gotten them. And that leads me into the second part of this thought process. So I would be remiss if I didn't mention the controversy that surrounds Phoebe Philo. If you are unfamiliar with Phoebe Philo, she used to be with Celine. She was well-renowned um, and well-known for her work there. She is just like this bad A, really powerhouse type of person in the fashion industry. And I've always respected and was a big fan of Phoebe Philo. Probably a couple of months ago when Iman was on a podcast, I believe. One, One of the, the designers, designers was, was a, a woman called Phil, who did Celine. Every woman, black, white, coveted Celine at. So Phil said, uh, am I going to be forced to use black She's never used black marks. So she said, am I going to be forced to use black marks? I said, no, there's got to be the right black mark for you. I said, I said for, for the, the action of she saying that she has to have the choice not to use black marks, that's, that's why I have never bought a Celine. She has the right to her runway, and I have a right to my pocket. Uh, it's like there's lots of bags that I can own. I don't need a Celine bag. Yeah. Especially if she feels nothing for me. Yeah. Yeah. So, Iman is like mother, okay? What Iman says, I take very, very seriously. If you watched the Beth Ann Hardison documentary that I suggested, you know that she and Beth Ann Hardison were two of the people that really went for diversity in the fashion space, right? So when she says something, my ears kind of perk up. So of course, hearing that and being a fan, I was definitely disappointed. Not surprised, um, but definitely disappointed. So then at some point, I just said, forget it. The stuff is expensive anyway. I'm not going out of my way, especially for old Celine. It's fine, no big deal. Then someone brought to my attention that she ended up having black models um, on, I think, her website specifically for her brand, the Fibu Philo brand. And think about maybe that's her way of, I don't know, doing better. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure, right? So then at that point, I started to think, well, should we give room to folks to do better? Or are they just completely canceled? Because here, here's the deal, right? I give money to people who want my money. If you are not catering to me. That's like with certain makeup brands I won't buy if your darkest color is me or lighter, right? And at some point she had a thought that, do I spend my money and buy the peak sunglasses? And that's what it is. I want the peak sunglasses. <laughs> I love them. I really do love them. And you can say that there are dupes to them sunglasses, but no, I have not found anything. They look similar, but they are not what those sunglasses are in my opinion. But anyway, and I know some people don't like them. I have to be one of, one of the people who do like them. I love a cat eye, flat top, sharp type of glasses, clean and just uh, love them. Anyway, if it's not my money that she wanted, why? would I give her my money and and or does she get a second chance and, and it's just it's around and around and around and I've actually had them in my cart more than once before they sold out and I, I just didn't do it or I couldn't do it because my head you know I'm still thinking about how to do this we do we continue with the cancel culture even when they're trying to do better was she trying to do better I don't I don't know um, so yeah, let me know what you think. I, and I, I know this is so naive, but imagine if things were just fair <laughs> and women and people of color didn't have to think about stuff like this. So anyway, uh, and I just know somebody's going to be like, I don't want her old boring clothes anyway. 
<laughs> and to that I say, sis, I understand. I get you. I get you. No big deal. But what I did want to say was the other day, it was a beautiful day. And my husband and I just decided to go for a walk. Um, we were both walk working from home that day. So we just went to go for a walk. And you guys know we, I live in Brooklyn. And we walked by the Brooklyn Museum. And unbeknownst to me, there was a freaking Dior show going on. Now, while they brought all like the big people to the back, I did get to see Eva Chang. I saw Jenna friggin' Lyons. <laughs> <laughs> and the buyer for Bergdorf with the gray hair, why is her name slipping? Oh, I'm sure I have her on the screen. And while people were waiting to see like movie stars and celebrities, my mouth was just like, oh, that's so-and-so and that's so-and-so being like, you know, a fashion nerd. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of fun um, just to see those people in person and to be at the Dior show in my hood. I know this vlog was a little different. I usually do a little more shopping and less talking <laughs> so in the next vlog the next vlog will probably be london so that would be much more fun and i'll see you then If you have been with me for a while and been following um, my style journey and my weight loss journey, you know that I have been really trying to hone in on what my style is, not only what my style is, but what makes me feel the best. I talked about how my current Instagram, I don't think is a good representation of who I am or what I am. And that's another story I will be getting on Instagram soon. But what I've really come to realize is that I have a certain anatomy to my outfits. And once you figure out the anatomy to your clothing or what makes you feel best and your outfits, you will always have something to wear. Let me show you how. So if you had been with me for a while, you have seen the slow change of my style and my evolution into who I am. You see me come up with my three words and you all had given me some of your three words. You have even seen me tell you or give you a visual representation of what my style vibe was. And I kind of talked you through the colors that I was using and the fabrics that I love. And while my style vibe is very much the same, it is the spring and the summer. So, so now it looks more like this. And if honestly, you guys, if you have missed these videos, I'm going to have them linked in the description box to kind of catch you up. But now that it's spring, I have more colors. It's a little lighter. I have linen. Um, so it's a similar vibe, just a little lighter, right? If you've also watched some of my shopping vlogs, you've seen the struggles that I was having for a few reasons. Um, one, because I feel like everything has been boring. Me and Jasmine were talking about that. Things have been boring <laughs> in stores, right? And then the other thing that I was struggling with is not wanting to spend money on things that I wouldn't wear long term. And a few of you actually made a suggestion that I instead shop for the body I have now. And you know what? I think you have a point. My weight loss has been slow, which I am thankful for. Um, but who knows how long it's going to take for me to get the rest of this weight off. So in the meantime, in the between time, I still need to be wearing some clothing. So, and I know I will eventually drop this weight, but until then I still have to look and feel good, right? So after I came to that realization, I figured out that I just need some basics, right? I don't have a lot of basics and foundations to outfits because everything in my closet right now, as I'm sure you have seen in a lot of my videos, are too big or ill-fitting. So then I started to examine what my three words were and what my vibe is and what makes me feel good, right? So I asked myself three questions of what makes me feel good, what makes me look good in my eyes, of course, and what is missing from my wardrobe. After asking myself those three questions, I really started to realize that there is an anatomy to each outfit. 
the bits and pieces that complete an outfit, right? So the base, the accessories, and the flair. And you guys know I love an acronym. <laughs> so the bath, right? All these pieces put together are a simple anatomy because it can go even deeper. The simple anatomy to everyday outfits. So that's really when I realized not only do I not have enough basics, I don't have enough base pieces in my closets. Not necessarily basics, but a base to an outfit that I can build on. For example, this outfit you saw earlier in the video, skirt and the vest, in my opinion, is the base. The accessories are the shoes, the sunglasses, and the bag, right? And then the flare would be me putting my jacket over my shoulders as opposed to um, actually wearing it, right? So the base, the accessories, and the flare. So what's an anatomy of any outfit, right? I do believe that um, uh, the bath can be different or it's different for each person. And I feel like there's so much to explore on this topic and I just wanted to give you a quick intro, but we will talk about this more in depth and as time goes on. I'm so excited. You guys know I love stuff like this. So stay tuned. So what is the anatomy of your perfect outfit. Obviously you have to take some time, some of us to kind of figure it out, but I would love to know. I really feel like everyone has a different type of, of style. Obviously, what is your perfect outfit? How do you achieve it? And how do you make sure that you look and feel good every single day with the anatomy of an outfit? Anyway, you guys, I gotta go. I have a lot of things to do. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, like, comment, subscribe, share the video, and I'll see you in my next video.